Hello everyone, I'm Jun Xiao. I'm a postdoc in University of Amsterdam. Today I will be talking about CETA, cache interference over task partitioning for real-time multi-core systems. A joint work with Andy Pimontel. This is outline of my presentation. I will start by introducing background. I will give a motivating example for cache interference aware task partitioning approach. After which, I will summarize the contribution of our work. Then I will describe CETA in details. I will also present some experimental results to show the benefit of CETA. Finally, I will draw the conclusion. Let's start with the background. A real-time task is a sequence of jobs. A real-time task tau k is characterized by three task parameters. Worst case execution time ck is relative deadline dk and period tk. We consider a real-time task set tau composed by multiple real-time tasks. Each task is represented by tau i. Our system architecture consists of a multi-core processor with m cores. Each core is represented by pi i. In multi-core processor, normally the caches are organized in a hierarchy of multiple ways. The lower level caches, for example L1 and L2, are private to cores, where the last level cache are usually shared among all the cores. A real-time task executing a multi-core processor with shared caches exhibit two kinds of cache interference during its execution. The first is called intercore cache interference, which happens when multiple tasks execute concurrently on different cores, assessing the shared cache. The second is called intracore cache interference, which occurs when a task is preempted and its data stored in the cache is evicted by another newly scheduled task. Note that in our task model, the worst case execution time does not include cache interference. We consider the scheduling policy as non-preemptive EDF. Since task execution is non-preemptive, so we can avoid intra-core cache interference. Therefore, in this presentation, Cache interference means intercore cache interference. Let's first explain the cache interference between only two tasks. Let tau i be the interfered task and tau k be the interfering task. We use the symbol rik to denote the upbound of the shared cache interference imposed on tau i by only one job execution of tau k. In the literature, it has been shown that the way to calculate such a parameter in this work, we assume that the cache interference RIK between two tasks is known. This is a motivating example of cache interference aware task partition. We consider three real-time tasks to be scheduled on a processor with two cores. The task parameters are listed here. Tau1 and Tau2 they have the same task parameters. They have an execution time equal to 3, where relative deadline equal to period 7. Well, for task Tau3, it has a worst case execution time of 2, and its relative deadline and period also 7. Furthermore, we assume that there is no cache interference between task Tau1 and task Tau3 and also no cache interference between task tau2 and task tau3. Well, task tau1 and task tau2, they do interfere each other, and the worst case cache interference is 3. This figure shows the scheduling background when tau1, tau2, and tau3 are scheduled by a global scheduler. Now let's look at t equal to zero. The three tasks are ready to execute. Well, at this time, only two tasks can be selected to execute since the process has only two cores. If the scheduler decides to select t1, uh, tau1, and tau2 to execute, 
then they may finish their execution at t equal to 6. This is because the black area here denotes the execution of the worst case execution time, where during the execution, tau 1 and tau 2 they could interfere each other, and the cache interference are denoted by the hatched area, which has a cumulative length of 3. So only when tau 1 and tau 2 finishes their execution at t equal to 6, tau 3 could start its execution. Well, since tau 3 has a worst case execution time of 2, tau 3 could miss its deadline, which is at t equal to 7. Later, we will show this task set is scheduled by, what? by partition scheduling. List the contribution of our work. For the first aspect, we propose theta, cache interference over task partitioning approach. It requires neither the operating system modification nor hardware support for cache locking. As required theta, for the calculation of an upbound on the cache interference exhibited by one task, we have the term we have developed an integer programming formulation for the calculation. We conducted the schedulability analysis of theta and proved its correctness. We have done a set of experiments to evaluate the schedulability performance of theta. The result shows that theta is better than global scheduling. Let's now look at theta in details. We first assume that tasks in the task set are sorted in non-decreasing order by means of a certain criterion. Theta approach consists of two steps. The first step consists of three sub-steps. For the first sub-step, we start by attempt by the attempt to assign task tau i to a core pi x. Since the partition scheduling reduces the problem of multi-core processor scheduling problem into a subset of single-core processing scheduling problems, we only need to check if the attempt will violate the schedulability of the tasks that us redesigned to core pi x. Thus, we will calculate the upbound on the cache interference IIK for each task that are already sent to core pi x. Then we will check if this condition will hold for all the tasks that are assigned to core pi x. Due to the time limit, I will not explain the details of this inequality. Well, let me briefly explain the rationale behind it. On the right side of this inequality, the first term denotes the execution demand for the tasks that has a higher priority than task tau k. Since all those tasks has a relative deadline shorter than task tau, a, tau k. Well, for the second part, it represents the maximum blocking time due to the task tau j which has a who has a lower priority than task tau k because we consider the non preemptive scheduling task tau j could start as its execution before tau k becomes ready if the sum of these two terms is smaller than the relative deadline of dk of tau k then Tau K is guaranteed to complete its execution before its deadline. So, if this condition holds for all the tasks that are already sent to task pi x, we can admit this attempt, since assigning tau i to pi x will not make the variations for the tasks that are already assigned to pi x. Well, if this condition valid for some tau k, then
then we have to refuse this attempt. Then we can attempt make another attempt to sign task tau i to the next available core pi x plus one. Then we can repeat the sub steps two and three for the new core pi x plus one. And here, if no cores can be assigned for tau i, then tau i will be added to the temporary non-allocatable task set tau t n a. Well, after performing the first step, the resulting tau t n a is neither empty set or non-empty. If it's empty, it means that all the tasks has been successfully assigned to cores. Then theta returns success. Well, by performing the uh, after performing step one, if tau t n a is non-empty, then we can perform step one to each tasks in tau t n a rapidly until tau t n a becomes empty, or no more tasks in the task set tau t n a can be allocated to cores. If at the end tau t n a becomes empty, theta returns success. Otherwise, theta returns fail. Let me illustrate a simple example of applying theta. We still use the previous example. We consider three tasks to be scheduled on a processor with two cores. Since Theta assumes that tasks are sorted by some order. Then we consider two possible orders. The first one is tau1, tau2, and tau3. We first attempt to assign task tau1 to core 1. Since task tau1 is the only task in core 1, the, the condition holds. Then we attempt to assign tau2 to core 1. We calculate the cache interference for tau1 and tau2. Since they have no interference with tau3, well, it's not possible for tau1 and tau2 to interfere each other since they are located to the same core. So the cache interference for tau1 and tau2 is zero. Then we can accept the attempt assign tau2 to core 1. And then we attempt to assign tau3 to core 1, since this assignment will make the condition valid for both tau1, tau2, and tau3 we refuse this attempt. Then we make another attempt to assign tau3 to core 2. Well, for all the tasks assigned to core 2, we only have task, uh, which is the task tau3. It won't violate the condition, so we can admit this attempt. Theta will return success. Uh, we consider the other task order, tau1, tau3, and tau2. First, we attempt to send tau1 to core 1. Then, we attempt to assign tau3 to core 1. Note that since we don't know where tau, tau2 will be allocated, when we calculate the upbound on the cache interference for tau1 given the current partition scheme, the worst case cache interference for tau1 is still 3. So the condition will valid for task tau1. Then we refuse this attempt of assigning task tau1 to core 1. We make another attempt to assign tau3 to core 2. For the same reason as the previous order, task order, we can accept this attempt. Finally, we set assign task tau2 to core 1. Then theta returns success. We systematically generated a syntactic workload by varying the number of tasks n total task utilization u, cache interference factor f, and the probability of two tasks having cache interference p. 
in each experiment will generate totally 20,000 task sets. We use the acceptance ratio, which is defined by the number of schedulable task sets divided by the total number of task sets as the evaluation metric. We consider five sorting criteria. The risk protocol of a task worst case execution time, task period, the protocol of a task utilization, task slack, and random order. We only show one example result here. We consider 20 tasks to be scheduled on four cores, where the interference factor is 0.2 and the probability is 0.1. As we can see in this figure, the red line represents the performance of global scheduling, where for the, other, the lines with other colors represents theta with different criteria. As we can see here clearly, theta outperforms the global EDF. Here, especially when the total task total utilization is smaller than 0.5, theta could almost schedule all the generated task set. Well, for global scheduling, the acceptance ratio is almost zero. It's also interesting that theta with different the gap between theta with different sorting criteria is very small. In conclusion, we have presented theta a cache interference aware task partition approach. We showed that theta outperforms the global scheduling. As for future work, we plan to compare it with cache partition approaches. We are also interested to extend it for the preemptive scheduling. Thank you for your attention.